Hey and welcome to today's video. My name is Julian. On this channel, it's all about making you crypto fit. We discuss all kinds of things around blockchain, cryptocurrencies, decentralization, and all the good stuff that happens around this. Uh, we don't discuss much of the price. We really want to go into the underlying basics and technologies. And today I want to kind of discuss a topic that's uh, been hitting in the news. Um, probably for the last two years, to be honest, uh, but it's been very recent now um, because Finally, we have multi-collateral DAI. And this is something that's been, well, long awaited for. Many, many people have been asking, how does this work? And I would love to show you the basics. How does it work? But, and here's the key thing. I want to highlight some of the dangers, some of the things to watch out for, and then obviously some of the possibilities. So let's dive in. I'll have a screen share ready, and we're going to discuss a couple of things in all of that. So here's my tablet. Let's get going. I don't know why the little mouse here is uh, happening here. Great. So um, let's minimize that thing here. And let's discuss multi-collateral die. Okay. Basically, how this works, instead of having a bank where you put an asset, so let's say you have your apartment, and you give your apartment to the bank, and then the bank gives you euros or dollars or whatever, Swiss francs, pounds, and so on. Um, then in, instead of having the centralized institution, we have a decentralized smart contract. And Ivan already uh, corrects me on this. I know DAI is basically not DAI anymore. It's now SAI, but uh, let's uh, find... Ivan, you got me on this one. Let's stick to the new kind of uh, principles here. Um, instead of having this bank where you put your apartment in, so let's say your apartment is worth 200,000 and let's just call it money because we want to be neutral to currency. So let's just say it's 200,000 money. And then let's say the bank gives you a 50% loan on that, right? So you can take out 50% of whatever it's worth. And then let's say you take out 100,000 money and you have an interest rate. And let's say the interest rate is 5%. And so you can use this 100,000 money. Um, you have to trust the bank, obviously, in all of this. But now you can walk around with this 100,000 money and uh, you can use this for whatever. If you ever want to get the full custody, basically, of the apartment back, you need to pay the 100,000 money back to the bank on top of the 5% interest. Very simple. But so now we could do this entire thing decentralized. And now we have a couple of advantages when we do this. First of all, we don't have to rely on banks. Basically, we can decentralize that. And that is very, very interesting. The second thing, and that's going to be something going forward, suddenly we can build an entire economy around this where, and that's not an interesting thing, we can ask ourselves, what are we stuffing here in on the very left side in order to get something out on the right side? And so, so far, we've always been getting out die. And now this thing is called Psi because it's multi-collateral. Um, and at the end, this is equivalent to one US dollar. At the very beginning, um, this entire system here was stuffed with Ether. And the entire system here ran on the Ethereum chain. So basically, the entire Ethereum community guaranteed that these contracts work. So you didn't have to rely on a bank. You didn't have to trust anyone. The bank couldn't cheat you. There was no centralized kind of failing point because you had this entire decentralized community. Um, and now obviously there's a couple of questions. First of all, how is the interest rate defined? And the interest rate is basically what's called the stability fee here. And the stability fee at the end makes also sure that this psi here or the die in the past stays $1. If Psy would drop too low, there has to be some kind of incentive for people to buy Psy. So there has to be an incentive because if you have an incentive to buy Psy, well, the price goes up again. And so at the end, it stabilizes out. And so how is this being done is through the stability fee. And how does the stability fee get decided? Well, actually, it's supply and demand, but it's moreover on a voting system, which is basically done by the MakerDAO system. And this is basically a separate coin that is a voting coin pretty much and allows you to vote on all kinds of decisions. For example, it allows you to vote on the stability fee. It also allows, and this is now quite new, 
what kind of assets on the left side could be added, just like your apartment can be added, for you to withdraw DAI. And um, it, in, it's around a 67%, 66.6% withdrawal rate that you can put in. Um, so you can, that's how much uh, has to stay in. So here it's 50%, here loan to value, um, you have to have 67% of your funds in. But so now they are offered a second coin that you can stack here and that's BAT, B-A-T. And uh, they've been thinking about a lot of other choices that you can add here. And here's obviously the key thing. This at the moment is really tied to the Ethereum system. So obviously Ethereum and ERC20 tokens. And so now this is where it gets interesting. So let's say the stability fee, and I, I'm not sure where it is right now. I think it just got changed, but let's say right now it's 5%. When you watch this video, it's probably somewhere else. It doesn't really matter. So let's say it's 5%. So there's a couple of things that are very interesting in this. Um, since the people with, who withdraw the SI out of the smart contract, they can do whatever they want now with these dollars. So they could go buy more Ether and uh, that's how they basically long, so you could actually leverage Ether. So these are a couple of things you can do, obviously. You can leverage your own holdings. You can go and lend Psi, for example, on Compound. And you get a return on this. So you can get passive income, basically, from your ETH. Um, and at the end, what you're basically doing is you're pretty much betting on what you think Ethereum is going to do, if you think about it. Because... If you think that Ethereum is going up more than the stability fee, so if you think F is going up, so delta is higher than the stability fee, then you should basically use this. And you should probably even buy more ETH, uh, so you should go long ETH. If you think that the stability fee is higher, then the annual progress of Ether, you should actually sell your ETH. Because then it doesn't make any sense because you're going to pay more in interest than the stability fee. So at the end, the stability fee is going to go and find its, uh, well, game theoretical neutral point. Um, what's the estimated forecast for Ether over a year's time? Um, because if it's too low, then more people put in ETH here and uh, take out more die, and then this entire system starts flowing. Um, if they think it's less, it goes the other way around. Now, the stability fee obviously has this interesting function. So let's say psi is too low, right? So let's say psi is too low. Now, why is it too low? It's very interesting because no one wants it, basically, right? So if, if, if an asset or something is not as interesting, then it drops in price. So how can you make it more desirable? It's very simple. By making the fee go up. If you make the fee go up, there's more interest. So people, in order to get their original assets back out, need to put in more and they have to buy this side on exchanges. So they put the fee up and then obviously more people have to buy it. So what happens is Psi goes up. And that way it balances out. And this has been exactly happening um, if you look at um, the entire markets. So end of 2018, the fee was very, very, very low because obviously forecasts have been very dire. Then uh, beginning of 2019, suddenly market shut up and uh, everyone was selling Psy or Dai back then for more ETH, for example, to, to leverage ETH because everything has been going up. So this fee had to go up and it really went up dramatically. I think at its peak, it went up to 20% per year. Um, and uh, so now it's been balancing out. Um, and uh, at the end, it's, uh, it's a very interesting system. It's self-regulating. Um, there's not a real centralized breaking point. Yeah, you can say the foundation, the, the maker foundation who is in charge of all this is a bit of a centralized breaking point. But I think this is uh, very minor. Um, I think there's a couple of hurdles in this. And, and let me point out some of the hurdles. Um, the main one is you have to trust the smart contract. That's actually the main trust you have, right? Um, and there's a lot, a lot of people who are very skeptical about um, smart contract being 100% secure. And every month um, they find some bugs. And this is a really dangerous case here because um, I think at the moment we have at close to half a billion dollars uh, worth of ETH locked up in there. 
Um, they have issued a, a bit over 100 million DAI right now, so there's quite a lot of money at stake. Um, and if this thing is not good, this entire thing busts here. Um, this would be very, very dangerous. Um, there has to be price oracles, and this is the challenging part, price oracles, to kind of measure the ETH and the BAT in this case against what it's worth so that you know how much you can uh, withdraw and then when you have to chip in and if the price falls below the threshold, um, these uh, smart contracts automatically um, liquidate the ETH and uh, give out the DAI and then kind of liquidate that. So just like a bank would do if you're not willing to pay back your loan. Um, but so if these smart contracts fail, this is really um, a big problem. Um, in my opinion, this has a lot to do with being Turing complete. Um, that's one of the major challenges that I think could be a question here. Um, and then obviously the other thing is, at the end you're dealing with the, e with the Ethereum system. Um, and that, that, to me, that's also a massive downside. Um, because uh, Ethereum has, I think in total, with all the ERC-20 tokens around, 20% of the market cap. So the majority doesn't really get covered in this. Um, yeah, and these are the big downsides. The upsides is it's been working. It's the, it's the largest DeFi system right now that we have. Um, they've done a good job in getting multi-collateral, um, basically not only having ETH, uh, but having uh, BAT as well, and hopefully adding more and more coins. So this is quite exciting. Um, yeah, the question is, will this hold? And you can let me know in the comments down below if you actually think this thing will hold because that's the major uh, question. Um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, let's see how it goes from there. Um, I think it's an exciting project. I'm using, uh, I hold Maker actually, I'm using it. I think it's a fantastic system. Um, obviously, and that's the key thing, it would be awesome to have something like this in Bitcoin, right? Um, and this is, um, well, a bit of a head start. I think many of you know this. That's something that we've been working on. If you want, you can check it out. You can go to DeFiChain.io um, and it's basically DeFi on Bitcoin. Check it out. Um, it's basically a similar system. It's not Turing complete on purpose. So it's incomplete, non-Turing complete. And uh, well, it's really DeFi on Bitcoin in order to bring this exact system onto the Bitcoin chain and uh, yeah, provide some really exciting things. So if you want, if you love DeFi, then check it out. Go to DeFiChain.io. Um, that's been something that we've been working on and uh, that we are gonna be, um, yeah, uh, that, that we're gonna be launching. So I hope you love this kind of stuff. If you do, let me know in the comments. Uh, Telmo says, love this kind of content, not much like other YouTubers. Please don't stop doing it. Thanks for this, don't worry. I'm not stopping it sometimes. Um, I have so many other things going on right now, especially uh, with Cake and with DeFi Chain. Um, yeah, focus obviously has to be comp companies first. Um, they pay the bills. Um, but uh, I think education is really, really important. So I hope you love this stuff. If you do, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, um, and share this, um, all these good things. And I will hope I'll see you at the next video. Thank you so much. See you next time. Yours truly, Julian.